We got married in 1999, so and we dated a few years before that. Oh. So, but I feel like I've been connected with her forever, just like the uh, vampire movie Edward and what's her name. <laughs> we were married in 1999, so this year will be 22 years. Yes. Yeah. We both went to college in Montgomery, Alabama. She went to Huntington College, and I went to Auburn and Montgomery. We both played college soccer. Well, I'm older than her by 362 days, and um, so when I graduated, I started refereeing soccer games. But we knew of each other because we used to beat her men's team over there relentlessly. They were awful, and we were really good. Um, so I knew of her that way, and then I started refereeing soccer games, and I actually refereed one of her soccer games, and she got a yellow card from this guy right here. She was an incredible uh, defender, uh, mean, nasty. Uh, she was really, really good, and she just, uh, she deserved the yellow card, I'll just put it that way. And then um, she finished college, and uh, I was teaching English in Alabama and working on my master's degree and coaching uh, for a club team. And we were scheduled to coach. She started coaching as well. And we were scheduled to coach on the same team. Well, something happened, and we needed a coach for one of our younger girls' teams. So she ended up going with that team. Um, and so we were practicing one night. I had an under-16 boys' team. And if you know anything about under-16 boys, Nothing, no thought stays in their head. So we're out there practicing one, one night, and while well, Mrs. Burdett, well, Mrs. Hamilton at the time, Coach, Coach Corey is what everyone called her, walked across our field. And all of our under-16 boys were like, ooh, John, you ought to ask her out. Because they knew I was single. I'm like, no, don't worry about it. So they kept egging me on. And so at the end of practice, I said, okay. So we always did free kicks at the end of practice. I said, okay, if I hit this free kick, I'll ask her out. Well, in soccer, you know the goal, and there's a corner. We call it the upper 90 or a postage stamp. I said, if I hit that, I'll ask her out. Well, I hit it. I could never hit these shots. So I said, no, that was a fluke. I'll, I have to do it again. I hit it again. So it was fate. I asked her out. We started dating, and the rest is history. Our first anniversary, we, we were in Holland, uh, actually in Norway, for a massive soccer tournament. Um, I was over there coaching a state team with uh, the guy who actually was our club director uh, in Alabama. He moved on to coach the state level teams. And um, on our anniversary, uh, Corey was coming over. She's a physical therapist. So she was our physio uh, for the two girls teams. Uh, so we coached that day. And then we were going to go out that night. Well, we went and started looking for a restaurant. Well, everything over there closes at 9 o'clock, which happens to be my current bedtime. So <laughs> um, nothing was open except McDonald's. So on our anniversary, we always go to McDonald's. Uh, people think that I'm cheap, which I am. But it's also because that's the only restaurant that was open for our anniversary. So Valentine's Day, we'll usually do stuff for our, for our uh, young men. They're not boys anymore. We have three young men in our house. Uh, so we usually do a little something for them. But uh, we do something nice for each other, but it's mostly about our kids now. Yeah, you kind of hit it, but I think this last like, real question is, like, do you have any special memories together? Anything that, like, really, like, maybe you're like, oh, she's the one, like, knew it for sure. Yeah, when I hit those two shots, yeah. That, that had to be the one because, really, uh, I was a defender in college, and I, probably because when I would shoot, it would go way over the goal. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a ton of memories. We've been together for a while, and uh, obviously our three boys are incredible memories. Our wedding day is incredible memory. Um, I'll go back to that anniversary. We were in a riot when we were over there. Uh, we went to watch. There's a team out of Amsterdam called Ajax. It's spelled Ajax. Uh, but we went to watch them play down in Bruges, Belgium. Um, and so our tour guide, uh, he got us these tickets to this game. So we went down there. Um, it's like a prison because of the hooligans, some of the hooligans over there. So on the home side, this is long, and I'm sorry it's really long. But on the home side, there's um, like prison gate, like really thick steel bars and all that. 
Well, IX, we were sitting with their fans, so we were fans. And I am a fan of IX anyway. They're really good. Um, we scored a goal. Well, the fans broke down that gate. <laughs> they were on the field. The players were actually telling them to get off the field. So, so on, so on. Half ends, and all the people on this end of the stands, they – pretty much all of them leave. And we ask our tour, tour guide, like, where are they going? And he said, well, you see those fans down there, which is the home fans? Yeah, they're going to go pick a fight with them. We're like, oh, that's fantastic. Well, this stadium was an open-ended stadium, so you could see out of the corners. Well, you see all the fans leave, and they go down, and then you see these things start flying into the stands. Well, all of a sudden, 5,000 fans – exit their end and our tour guide says get to the top of the stands because we were still we didn't go riot with <laughs> um throwing stuff you shouldn't do that boys and girls so we um we get to the top of the steps he i said what's going on he goes well all of them are coming over here to fight us because of them i said fantastic so my wife we had an old school camcorder that we had um, i told her i said give me your wedding ring i'll put it in my pocket do not leave from behind me so I was ready to fight. I'm not a fighter, more of a poet, um, but, uh, you know, stuff happens. The funny part of that, one of the best memories is our, uh, the guy who brought us over there, who is one of our best friends in the world, his kids called us Uncle John, Aunt Corey. Our kids call him and his wife Uncle Kenny and Aunt Angela. So I'm getting ready because the first few of our people come in and they've got some blood splurting out. I'm like, oh, this is legit. <laughs> We're ready. So I was like gearing up, doing the Rocky theme in my head, you know, warming up a little bit. But I thought, like, this is – we're really going to be in a fight. So um, I get ready and I look behind. I was like, Corey, do not leave from behind me. And I look and our friend Kenny is standing behind Corey. <laughs> He's like, go get him, John. I'm like, get your butt up here and you take it like a man. Um, so – we were scheduled to leave for Norway because we flew into Holland first to do a little training, and then we were going to get both teams. We were scheduled to leave out of Amsterdam at 6 the next morning. So this is at night down in Bruges. Um, well, thank God they got the riot police there. They didn't come in and beat us to smithereens. So after the game, we go out, and there's a little holding area, and they have these massive dogs uh, I don't. I remember the kind they were. They were German Shepherds on steroids. Like German Shepherds here, these dogs were like this, full riot gear, like shields from top. If you've seen the European stuff, were that. So I was like, whoa, this is big time. This is like a Jason Bourne movie or something <laughs> before Jason Bourne came out. So we're waiting in this holding area, and our tour guide's with us. Well, we we rode in his car down to the game. Well, if you looked into the city of Bruges, there were fires all over the place. We're like, what the heck is going on here? He's like, well, all of the home fans are probably burning the cars of fans from Holland. He's from Holland. We're like, well, your car might be burned. He said, yeah, maybe so. So we wait, we wait, we wait. And we had parked just over a bridge, and there were some, you could see some fires over there. We're like, oh gosh, we're never getting out of here. Our girls are going to be, they had parents, but the coaches were down in Belgium. <laughs> um, so at midnight, he goes and talks to the guards. Uh, he spoke seven languages. So he went and talked to the guards and said, hey, we've got some Americans here. They're flying to Norway tomorrow morning. Can we, can we leave? They let us out. Remember, massive dogs. So we start walking out, and our friend Kenny, because he's a moron, and my best friend in the world, but he's a moron, he goes and tries to pet one of the dogs. <laughs> Not a good idea. So that dog goes nuts. We, <laughs> I almost soiled myself. Um, but we, luckily we got out. We go across the bridge and see his car is not on fire. We sprint to his car, get in, and we take off back to Holland. And um, we stayed up all night because your adrenaline's going, got on a plane, flew to Norway the next morning, and then the rest is history. Our, one of our girls' teams took second. Out of all, there were over 1,000 teams, not necessarily in our age group, but our little girls' team, we lost to a team in Africa. We played in the Olympic Stadium in Oslo from the 40s. It was a nationally televised game, and our girls, we took second place. We lost one to nothing. So that was an incredible trip. Very 
uh, memorable uh, for many, many reasons. But I almost got pummeled in a riot and so did my wife because our best friend was standing right behind my wife. <laughs> and that's her right there, this beautiful woman right here. She's more beautiful today than she was back then. Uh, she's incredible. She keeps us all together and I love her to pieces. So, yeah, yeah. Thank God for soccer and thank God for good luck. <laughs>